Well, hello and good morning, everybody. Oh my goodness, it's so great to see you all here. Am I in the chat? Let me make sure that I am alive. No, I'm good. I think everything is fine today. Well, hey, everybody. Hi, it's Becky from Power Tools with Thread. Thank you so much for joining me this morning. Uh, this is our virtual quilt retreat. We do Monday through Friday for about an hour at 7 a.m. Central. And uh, we just get in here and um, we tidy, we stitch. Some of you are just getting off work. Some of you are getting ready for work. So it's great to see everybody here this morning. And thank you for spending a little piece of your day with me. We have got a virtual kitchen in our quilt retreat. So if you feel like wandering over there, I am aware there are some pastries and coffee and juice and things like that. And it's always a lot of fun to wander over there. Good morning, Pam. Hi, sweetheart. Oh my goodness. All my friends are here. This is like we are all a bunch of friends saying hello to each other. So uh, you're he heading to Galveston to sew today, Susan. Susan, my eyes are watering. Oh my word. Well, good. It's supposed to be really cold and uh, the weather is not cooperating. I understand we're going to be leaving around 1030 or 11. And I understand that as we head back, we're going to run into the weather. So it's supposed to be raining, but we'll see how it goes. Yeah, uh, we are. Uh, we have been in Galveston, Texas for the new year, and we had a wonderful time. We met some wonderful new friends and looking forward to um, going to new rallies with them and whatnot. So it was it was a lot of fun, a lot of fun this weekend. All right. I uh, wanted to just pop in here. You're working. Yeah, you guys, leave me a comment. Yo, my eyes are watering terrible. First thing in the morning. I apologize. So uh, let me know what you're working on. If you guys or are, uh, you got something in the works that you're doing, either leave a comment in the chat or you can leave a comment below the video. If you want to leave a comment in the chat, you need to be logged into your Google account, whether it's Gmail or maybe you started an account for YouTube. They are the same account and they work for both. And then you may notice as people chat in the, in the chat here on the side, they might have an at symbol. Well, that at symbol, if you want to get someone's attention or specifically answer their question, then just put the at symbol. There's my Harley dog. Uh, and here's my... Daddy dog. Daddy dog. Handsome husband. Good morning. Good morning. So if you put the at symbol and then start typing the first letter or two of that person's name without a space, when they look at it on this side of their screen, then it'll show up in a bright orange You're for them. Happened. Betty Boop, did I just see that you've lost your mojo? I find that hard to believe. You have been working and working and working on some crazy stuff. Yeah. Teresa said, hi, Harley. So, <laughs> oh, we've got, is that crawlers? Oh, I love that. In the kitchen, I hear. That's wonderful. Robin's going to be doing a mystery quilt. Good for you. I understand the Fat Quarter Shop has a new one coming out too. Oh, you guys. Making 25 Kimberbell. Sweet. I miss that. Uh, sweet feet ice skates. Oh, nice. How fun. You guys are getting ready to do a quilt of valor. Kathy says, that's great. How to prepare red fabric need help control bleeding. Great question, Kathy. Very good question. Especially if you're going to do a quilt of valor. Generally quilts of valor are used on a bed. They are designed to be snuggled in, right? Uh, treat it like an Easter egg. That is my best advice. You might put it into, if you've got yardage, I would go ahead and fill a, um, if you've got more than a bucket worth, you can go ahead and fill your washing machine tub with cold water and some vinegar and put the red fabric in there and let it do its thing so that the dye sets. Uh, whether you have got red fabric from a quilt store, you know, at 12, $13 a yard, or even more importantly, if you purchase their Frito, <laughs> photobombing my shot. Uh, 
even if you've, and, and more importantly, if you purchase the fabric at somewhere like Joann's or Walmart or anywhere else that is not $12, $13 a yard, which is what they, um, what, what they charge at quilt stores, you definitely want to sit, set that fabric. So think, like I said, think of it like an Easter egg. What did you do to set color on Easter eggs with the little, remember we used to put dye in the water and all that vinegar. So cold water, vinegar, let it sit in there, run it through the spin cycle, you know, the rinse and spin, uh, you can wash it, but if you wash it, you risk a, I, I, I don't wash my, I don't like to pre-wash my fabrics. That's just me personally. You certainly can. I just don't care to do that. So I just recommend doing that and then let it air dry. Uh, you can run it through the spin cycle, let it air dry, and then you want to press it out really good. Okay. But that is my best advice to control bleeding. You also might try if you, you may want to do it with your blues simply because you know that your background fabric on that quilt will be white. So just give that a shot. I've got new comments I need to catch up with. Oh, good. My goodness. You guys are busy, busy, busy. Let me jump down here to the bottom. There we go. So I recommend giving that a try. Now, if you are working with pre-cuts, don't agitate that fabric. <laughs> you can put, if you're working with pre-cuts, then you can go ahead and soak them in like uh, a bucket of cold water with vinegar. And y'all for vinegar, if I was doing a gallon, I would do like a cup of vinegar in one gallon is how I would do that. So soak it in there, let it sit for 20, 30 minutes or whatever, and then wring it out as best you can. Roll it in a beach towel, lay your pieces out flat. If you've got 10 inch squares or you've got two and a half inch strips, roll your pieces in a beach towel, just step on it, kind of squish all that water out, unroll it, hang it over somewhere, let it air dry. Okay. So that's just me. That's, that's what I would do. So, uh, oh my goodness, Kim, good for you. Her new year's resolution was to catch the situation room live. Well, the early bird catches the worm, right? Isn't that how that goes? Yeah. Um, Oh, Evelyn, you're busy making gifts for girls to craft with. That's wonderful. My goodness. Yeah. So today I am going to uh, pack this thing up. We are leaving about 11 and heading back. We live just southeast of San Antonio, Texas. So we have about a three and a half hour trip ahead of us to get home. Not too bad. And all will be well until the 27th of January when we fly out to the uh, Cape uh, Port Canaveral to go on the sew and sail cruise. So today, uh, you know, a lot of you have been with me for years and I love you all. And we are getting more and more people that are joining the channel and joining the chat. Sharon, good morning from Sisters, Oregon. I really want to go there. Bucket list on that quilt show for sure. So a lot of you email me outside of the chat and outside of the channel <clears throat> and you ask me questions, you want my advice or my opinion on something and I love it. I thrive on that kind of thing. I, I enjoy uh, anything to talk about stitching. I'm all over that. But there are so many of you, so many. So I think what I'm going to do, and I'll start today, is just answer a couple of questions in the video that people have asked me that, not personal type questions, but questions where it might apply to something that you wondered yourself and weren't sure of. And that way, and then I can just reply back to them and say, check video on this date, and then they can check it out, or maybe they're watching right now and, and hear the, the answer. Because y'all, there's not enough uh, hours in the day. I promise you there are not. So, oh, thank you, Jasmine, you're a sweetheart. She says, thanks for all you do. So I wanted to do that. I, I was reading over my recent ones. Honestly, the way I manage this, you guys, is as you email me and ask me questions, it's gonna take a few minutes for me to actually sit down maybe do some research and figure out 
you know, exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> Sometimes I don't even know what you're talking about. Sometimes I do. But if I don't, I try to do some research and then answer you back. And that's, that's a lot of time. And so um, what I do is when I see a question like that, I flag it in my email. And then uh, on uh, every single Sunday, I have a, a, a reminder come up on my Outlook that says, respond to flagged emails. <laughs> and that way, at least I know <clears throat> I can get back to you guys. So I so I've got them on my phone here. I still don't see my present with that uh, thing. So somebody wanted to know the T-shirt I was wearing yesterday. And if you missed this, is today the second or today's the second. I can see my Apple thing is telling me it's January 2nd uh, that. Uh, so a lot of you were surprised that we had a live yesterday, but I was like, well, it's a Monday and we're here. So I had some time. <clears throat> so I was wearing the shirt yesterday. It was in the shape of a cross and it said uh, creative like my creator. And that is from Creations Quilt Shop in Plant City, Florida. So if you are interested in uh, getting yourself one of those, they've been so, so popular with my viewers that you can go over to their website, Creations. It's Creations Quilting or Create. Cre yeah, Creations, I think it is it Creations. Y'all help me out here. Some of you know who that is. Uh, but look for Quilt Shop Plant City, Florida and in Mr. Google, and it will come up and they are the ones who have that shirt. So where do I get my plain t-shirts? Gosh, Janet, I don't know if I own a plain t-shirt. <laughs> There it is. Beverly got it. Inspire in Plant City. I had creations in my head. Inspire quilting in Plant City. Thank you, Beverly. That's exactly where I got that from. So uh, I, I had creations in my head. We were talking about that shop that just closed up in Kerrville. So there it is. Inspire quilting. Thank you, Beverly. Appreciate you. The dogs are good. Thank you. All right. So that was that question. And let's see another one. Uh, so... I had mentioned yesterday that we are talking about getting together a stitching retreat for RVers, or even if you can't RV, to have everybody get together uh, sometime probably late summer 2024. And uh, I received a lot of suggestions on locations. and. I do need to let you know, uh, oh, the one I put my stickers on. Oh gosh. I get those from Walmart. You guys don't spend a load of money on those. Yeah. Janet, I put, I get those t-shirts at Walmart. They're wonderful. They're like jerseys or something. I don't know what they are. Photo bomb from Harley. There we go. Still here. She's 17 this month. She's still here. <laughs> uh, so one of you suggested a fam camp. And for those who are unfamiliar with that, a fam camp is a military sponsored or military. I don't want my, my thing is moving military sponsored. What something's going on, wiggling my camera terribly. I think it's my husband. Uh, RV camp ground is what that is. And I'll just let you guys know, while, you know, it, those are great. The problem with those, uh, for the most part, when you check in, you've got to have an ID card, but they're very, very particular about military sponsored campgrounds are very particular about making sure your dogs have all their shots. If you want to ride your bike, you got to have a helmet. I mean, they're just over the top cramp your style. And so Keith and I try now pretty much to stay away from those because you, you know, they're just, they've got so many rules and regulations. And then a lot of times they don't have the rally room space that we would need. So I'm leaving all of that, uh, to Bonnie. Uh, Bonnie was with me yesterday. Uh, she is the secretary for the international chapter or the international group for the four travel RV thing. I don't know. 
We don't have a four travel. We have a Winnebago. Yeah. I Julianne says she forgot about fam camps. Fam camps are great. They're wonderfully maintained. You run into like-minded people if you have ever been in the military and they are fantastic, but they are a bit of, um, they're difficult. <laughs> they're difficult. So uh, we're not going to be staying in fan camps. So right now we are kind of zeroing in maybe on the uh, Lost Lagoon in El Campo, looking for a place that's got a great swimming pool, uh, things to do for grandkids if they come with you, cabins if you don't have an RV, that kind of thing. So I just want to let you guys know about that. So I'm leaving that to Bonnie. She is a pro at setting up things to uh, things to do. Alrighty. Um, question about the scan and cut on the cruise. Do you, so end of January is the scan and cut masterclass. So in sale 13. So you don't have to bring a scan and cut. Uh, if you have one, please bring it. You're going to want it. There will be some there for sale, but I am under the understanding that yes, yeah, Julian says the military like their rules. Yes, they do. Uh, I am under the stand, understanding that yes, uh, you will need to make provisions to get it home, which means it should be probably your carry on. Okay. If you're not driving and you've got to fly home, just be sure to um, make sure that that is your carry on. You could put a couple of things in, you know, in the box if you wanted to, but that needs to be the thing that goes up top. All right. And then if you could carry a backpack, your backpack can serve as your, you know, under the seat thing that you've got. So think about that. Uh, I like to travel when I fly with a backpack. So I've got all of my things that I would normally carry in my purse are on my back and that stays with me. And then I can also take that extra thing and put it up in the top. So there's that. All right. All right. And yes, I will. I'm going to be teaching a class on cutting fabric with the scan and cut. I don't know that we have got, uh, you know, if you want to bring your laptop and we can certainly play around after full class time to, cause we're going to have certain class hours on the cruise. And so we're going to cut fabric in the scan and cut with the scan and cut during the cruise. That's like near the end of the day after that want to have, um, uh, we can all get together afterwards and bring your laptop with him brilliance installed on it. And then we will go uh, over it together and we can do this and I'll walk you through all of that. And if you, um, you definitely need to have him brilliance installed before you at least download it. If you don't know how to install it, that's fine. I can help you install it, but at least get it downloaded to your laptop as you, uh, before you get on the cruise. All right. And then I'm happy to help you install it, get you all set up, get you set up with thumbnailer. You're going to need essentials, stitch artist two and thumbnailer. I recommend at a minimum in order to be able to do what I do to turn paper embroidery designs into, I'm sorry, paper applique designs into embroidery designs. If you have a cutting machine other than a scan and cut, this is another big question. People say, well, I have a Cricut and I want to cut out fabric with my Cricut and I've got a scanner on my printer to be able to scan the image. That's not going to work. Okay. You need to be able to turn that paper image into a, Grace wants to know what fabric am I using for the luggage tag? It's a pleather. I'm going to be, we're going to go over that here in just a second, but I wanted to highlight that. I'm going to be using a, a pleather. So if you want to turn paper applique patterns like flower petals or leaves or vines or whatever, or monsters or whatever it is you want to do into fabric embroidery designs, you've got to be able to turn that paper pattern into a vector graphic and a print scanner won't do that. A printer scanner won't do that. The scan and cut will do that. Another way you can do it, whether it's Silhouette or Cricut, they have the ability for you to take a picture of it with your phone, take a picture of the pattern with your phone, and then upload it to their 
cloud software. Their cloud software will convert it to a vector graphic. However, it's going to change the size is what I'm told. So you really need to pay attention and make sure because it will resize your image. I understand there are ways around that. I don't know what those are for those other systems, those other cutting systems. So I think, Harriet, I think Stitch Artist 2 is enough. But let me tell you what goes on here. I highly recommend you get Essentials in addition to Stitch Artist 2 because, and right now it's on sale. I've got a coupon code below for another 10% off through the 15th of January. The reason I recommend you get, I'm sorry, it's wiggling you guys every time I touch it. I need, I wonder, let me get my mouse and maybe I can do it with my mouse and not have to touch the screen. Hold on. So the reason I recommend that you get essentials in addition to Stitch Artist 2 is because there is a utility in the utility menu of essentials. There is a feature called color sort. You don't get that in just Stitch Artist. In Stitch Artist, it doesn't have the color sort feature. All right. You want color sort when you're doing applique because... When you're doing, let's say, leaves on a vine or something like that, all right? Or maybe you, you, so we've got a tree or we have a flower and a lot of different petals. Whatever it is, when you have multiples of things, you want to be able to put the placement line for all the leaves down at one time. Then remove the hoop, go iron in all of the leaves, okay, and then put it back in the hoop and then do the tack down for all of the leaves at the same time. You want to do all of the same color at the same time in the same step. You may not be able, that can get very, very tedious if you have to do one and changing thread colors and do another and changing thread colors and do another and changing thread and you're back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. So, do you have to have essentials? No, you do not. Okay. But if you are going to be doing applique embroidery with Stitch Artist 2, you definitely are going to want to get kind of savvy with being able to do a color sort. So, hey, while I'm thinking about it and you're here, uh, free to you and uh, great for the channel is to please hit the thumbs up button. That would be very helpful and I'd appreciate it. So, did you take Harley outside yet, babe? I did. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah. 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 Don't do your silly voice. <laughs> so funny. It's Julie's first time at a live. Welcome. Glad you are here. Let me see if I can get, yeah. Let me see if I can get this uh, to work. And oh, good. Montana, you're here. It's your first. That's wonderful. Yo, I am still kind of blurry this morning. So that's just me personally. And then Thumbnailer is a, another, it's a separate utility from Embrilliance Essentials or Stitch Artist 2. It's not embroidery software. It's just a utility that turns your embroidery designs into little, let me pick you up. He's moving the coach. It's just a utility that turns embroidery designs into pictures on your picture folder on your uh, on your computer so that you can see what you're looking at when you're looking for designs. Cause you know, a lot of times the embroidery designs are just little letters and numbers. Like if you have a Kimberbell thing, it'll say KD, which is Kimberbell designs. And then it'll have a number and you get to guess what it is. <laughs> so anyway, um, yeah. So that's just something to think about. Again, do you have to have essentials? You do not. But as you progress in your journey of, scanning in oh you're at a loss you need to go watch my beginning in brilliance yeah you just haven't watched in a while mary that's okay yeah this is much better than me touching the screen so that but that's just important and once you get the hang of this y'all and start simple don't start with an ant with a judy niemeyer quilt you guys don't do that to yourself <laughs> start simple and just do something where you're, you're like, okay. Uh, oh, and if you are doing Judy Niemeyer quilts with all of the applique on there, Vanessa from Fabric Confetti works with the Judy Niemeyer 
for creating the creating the uh, the vines and the leaves and the petals and the flowers and all of that for Judy Niemeyer quilts, any of the applique. She has digitized those designs and she has got them on the Fabric Confetti website. I have a link to it below, but just you, you Judy Niemeyer uh, people. Yeah. Deb, that, that was you. She said she binged watch my videos over the holidays. It was so funny. I got a read from YouTube yesterday that said that uh, my videos from several years ago were watched more in the last week of the year. <laughs> I thought, who's watching my videos? <laughs> that was you, Deb. Yep. <laughs> All right. So I hope that answers that question. All right. And then we have another one. Have I done a video on Merrily? I have not. I demoed it quickly. Uh, oh, you started embroidery because of a Niemeyer quilt, Tina. Yeah. Well, you're, you're way out of my league, girl, because I don't, I wouldn't even attempt a Niemeyer. There's a lot of paper piecing in there. It's not my thing. Um, I've done a little demo of Merrily on this in a situation room, but not like a video on it. And I know I need to do one. You guys, it's so incredibly simple that when you see it, you're going to be like, oh, that's easy. So I, that is on my schedule to do, um, maybe in February, I will get that done. Okay. Let's see. Someone asked me, what is the bobbin thread that I use in my embroidery machine? Y'all, I use the same bobbin thread in every one of my embroidery machines that takes that same size. So in the Luminaire and my NQ3700D, I, I use the 70 weight pre-wounds from Dime. I just buy a tube of them and that one tube will last me two years. So uh, those, that's my favorite. Okay. Now, if I have like the 10 needle, I use the Filtech magnetic pre-wounds for that. So I just tend not to wind my own bobbins. The only time I wind my own bobbins is when I'm going to be doing freestanding lace and I need the back to look the same as the front. And then I will just go ahead and use the same thread on the bobbin as I do the top and it's usually the 40 weight. So it, that they are the same, same color. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, let's see here. Uh, that's not for you guys. Let's see. That's not for you guys. I'm going through, if you just joined us, a lot of people email me and ask me questions that are, um, would apply to everybody. So, if you are downloading zip files, make sure to unzip them before you use the digital files that are in a zip file. Like if you download something from Designs by Juju, you have to unzip it. I know zipping can be kind of a computer challenge thing. You guys think about a zip file like the, uh, the space bag. You know those space bags that you can put a blanket in or a quilt and you suck it out with the vacuum cleaner, right? And everything sucks down and it's unusable, but you can move it around very easily and you can store it easily. That's what zip files are like. Zip files are like, they move easily, they compress everything really small, and then they go across the internet and the email very, very quickly. So when you are, when you download a zip file, it has to be unzipped. So you have to open the zipper or open the plug and let the air back in. All right. And when you let the air back in, the quilt then becomes usable again. That is just like a zip file. So when you download that zip file from an embroidery design spot, whatever, wherever you got it, you have to unzip, unzip them. I've, shown how to unzip files in various videos that I've done, but they've always been on windows. <laughs> Y'all have got to, I'm not, I'm still struggling to download zip files on the iPad. I downloaded one the other day and I poked around for about 10 minutes till I finally figured it out. <laughs> it's not easy. I'm sure it's easy to you Apple users. 
I'm a Windows girl, even though I'm on an iPad right now. So that is uh, how. So I've got I've got videos on how to do it, and you can search on my channel and type the word zip, and it'll come up, and it'll show you how to unzip a file and how to use the full files. But uh, that's only for Windows. So as soon as I get savvy at unzipping on a an Apple device, I'll let you know. They call it compress or decompress. Totally different verbiage. Why do they have to be difficult? I don't know, but. <laughs> All right, so be sure to do that because if you have not unzipped those files, you'll see them and you try to drag them over or import them into your embroidery software and it won't work and you'll get all frustrated and you don't know why, but that check that first. That's probably why. All right. Uh, okay. Question about the IV pole that I use to hold the water bottle on my Sapporo gravity fed iron. I do have a counterweight on that. I actually set my Panasonic iron on the other end of that leg, but I do use a counterweight because it can tip. I I try to I try to turn the IV pole at the top so that it's going, you know, the legs are crisscrossed and that way it's in the center of one of the crisscrosses on the legs. And then if it still wants to tip a little bit with that gallon of water on top of it, uh, I don't fill the bottle a hundred percent. And then I also um, I, I will put a counterweight, just something on there. Now it doesn't have to be anything heavy. It usually does a pretty good job. Yes. And we are going to do a tutorial on the luggage tag on Friday at 10 AM central. I'm pretty sure. So I'm going to do that. Okay. When you guys are shopping on the power tools with thread store site, and you find something that you want and it's sold out there is a black button there that says you know let me know when this is available all you have to do is put in your email you do not have to create an account we don't have the ability for you guys to create accounts on our store site um it's that that's not necessary just put in your email you're not going to get a reply email that says okay thanks put in a password or create it we don't do that i don't that's you're just going to get an email that says, Hey, that pink seam ripper that you wanted is back in stock. And when you get that email, don't dilly dally. <laughs> I'm going to tell you right now, don't dilly dally. <laughs> so, uh, you know, they go quickly, especially the purples and the pinks. And uh, so you guys just kind of be aware of that. So another thing YouTube told me, on my weekly recap was you guys shared my channel. Now why it did it again? It jumped me vertical and I don't know why. Let me jump out of the stream and I'm gonna come right back just a second. Let me stage. There we go. That's the strangest thing, you guys, that happened yesterday. Um, Storytime needs a new ripper end for her Keith Ripper. Yes, Keith is my husband. He uh, hand spins all of those seam rippers on his lathe in uh, the shop. And if, if you, you and Jack Ripper have a lot of time together, uh, you can dull those over time. So we do sell the rippers separately, the ripper ends separately. So that's a nice uh, little feature. You don't have to buy a whole new one, right? Alrighty, and let's see what else. You guys have asked, whenever I do applique and I don't pre-cut my pieces using the scan and cut, just like on the Designs by Juju Christmas tree skirt, do I put heat and bond light on the back of the fabric still? I do not. If there's going to be a tack down line, so you know you have the placement line standard, and then you take a piece of fabric and you lay it over the placement line, then you allow the tack down line to stitch. Then you remove the hoop and you trim around the outside of that tack down line. That is how you do applique the old fashioned, you know, standard way on an embroidery machine. I do not put heat and bond light on the back of that fabric. 
if you want to, Marsha, thank you so much, sweetheart, for your super sticker. You're a, you, Marsha, is, she supports my habit. That's the way you can, uh, pardon my nose, y'all, I'm itching my nose. That is, uh, there's a, a little dollar sign below the chat. There might be a super sticker below the video, and that is how you show your appreciation for the content, and thank you so much. That buys thread and fabric for sure. <laughs> so what you do, what I do is you can, if you want, you can put heat and bond light on top of, I'm sorry, on the back side of your applique fabric, even if you're going to trim it with scissors. Why would you want to do that? Because the heat and bond, <coughs> the heat and bond light seals the edge of that cut and you don't get the fraying that you can get from regular applique cuts with scissors. It, if you seal that into, if you have a good adhesion with the heat and bond light, it becomes one with the fibers. And then when you trim it with your scissors, you're gonna get a nice clean cut. You want that only if you're gonna be doing a blanket stitch or a run stitch, like raw edge applique. Raw edge, you might want fuzzy, I don't know. You want you might want that frame. But with a blanket stitch, you may not want to have that frame. So if you're doing a final satin stitch, don't bother with it because that satin stitch is gonna cover all that frame anyway. Oh, Anne, thank you so much for the super sticker. You're so sweetheart. You're a sweetheart. Thank you so much. I uh, discovered another little thing, a tidbit that I wanted to share with you guys. I found out, I don't know why it took me so long to figure this out. I've only been doing this for, I don't know, years, 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 right? I figured out if you're going to be trimming your applicant, my heater's loud, you guys, sorry, it's cold. If you're going to be trimming your applique fabric and you're right-handed, trim it clockwise. You're going to get a much closer cut than if you trim it counterclockwise. So it's a little bit harder to see counterclockwise. You're picking it up and you're cutting it, you know, going away from you. But if you pick it up and go clockwise, because that lower blade is closer to the fabric, okay, then you're going to get a much closer cut. So give that a try if you're not happy with your applique trimming. So um, that's a little, I was like, look how close that is when I go the other direction. It seems a little counterintuitive, but it works. All right. So Paula uses SF 101 on all of her applique fabrics. You can do that. SF 101 will work. Um, it will change the hand of your fabric just a little bit. Same like the heat and bond light that that is true all right debbie here we go what is the best way to put two pieces of stabilizer together to make a larger piece well i don't know the best way but i'll tell you my way i overlap my stabilizer pieces just a little bit like half an inch three quarters of an inch i lay them one on top of the other i don't put them together like this and sew a seam I don't want that because then when you open it up, you've got bulk. So what I do is I lay overlay them like a lapped seam and then do a very wide join stitch. If you don't have a join stitch, do a very wide zigzag. Not necessarily wide left and right, but wide lengthwise. All right. If you don't have, if all you've got is a featherweight, do a uh, basting stitch. Okay something that's not going to bunch that up. And if it does bunch up before you use it, just start in the middle and just kind of push them out just like you do a casing with elastic. Okay. Same thing. So, yeah. So you have the luminaire, there is a join stitch and the join stitch looks like a sl upward slash. And then it goes stitch, stitch, downward slash, stitch, stitch, upward slash, over, over. Take a look at it. Three-step zigzag, four-step zigzag, something like that, Diane. Yes. Sounds like Dan step. Mm-hmm. Keith is sitting right here. He says, uh, sounds like a dance step. Yes. Okie doke. Um, let's see here. Let me get to the next question. Um, I think that might be the last one that I had. I No, someone else asked me. 
What time is breakfast? So, you, no, not what time is breakfast. I'm at work, dear. Oh. Okay. <laughs> yeah, same on the Solaris. Okay, but just use a really, a lap seam, single lap seam, zigzag, or uh, the, um, or the thing. How do you shrink SF-101? Uh, it's it on the paper that it go, comes with SF-101. Is it on the paper? Maybe it doesn't have a paper. It's on their website. I think you just hold an iron over it and steam it and then let it cool. Poor Keith's starving over there, Julianne's feeling sorry for you, baby. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, Nancy wants to know what you're making for breakfast. Yeah, that's a good one because I've made breakfast all week. I got to get the rig ready. Oh, he has to get the rig ready. When we have a quick breakfast needs, I've got the uh, Bay's English muffins in the refrigerator and uh, I will turkey bacon and an egg and a little bit of cheese. So that is breakfast. That's the way we do that. Somebody said they had a 10 needle and they asked me, should they get the monster snap hoop from Designs and Machine Embroidery, the dime monster snap hoop, or should they get the mighty hoops? I've looked at those mighty hoops too. And the mighty hoops are the ones, it's a multi-piece system. Sometimes it has a board that like bends and snaps and does all of that. Uh, oh, Barbara says the quiche is out of the oven. Help yourself. <laughs> oh. Good one, Barbara. <laughs> oh my goodness. So I think those mighty hoops, y'all, those are great. They really are. If you're doing production. I think the Mighty Hoops are really good. If you're going to be doing a lot of shirts and you've got to get that exactly every time, maybe you're doing a lot of tote bags, you've got to get it straight all the time. That's the thing when you're doing the, uh, with the Mighty Hoops, that's really what they're for. I've looked at them. They're expensive. So if, if you're going to get, this is just me personally. If you want to get them, knock yourself out. You'll be happy with them. Uh, you guys are looking it up on your machines to see that join stitch on the luminaire is two and then dash 08. I know on the NQ 3700 D it's two and 07. So it varies between machine. Okay. Uh, can the iron be used without water hooked up for travel? Yes. Oh, the Sapporo. Can it be used without water? I use mine without water all the time, all the time. I rarely use steam. So yeah, you absolutely don't have to have it, but you're going to have hose. I wouldn't take it traveling. I use a little travel iron. That's all I use. It's, it's easier. Okay. So this is, thank you, Holly. Okay. She has these and I think she knows of what she speaks. Okay. The mighty hoops have a stronger magnet, harder to hoop without the accessories. Right. You, like I said, the mighty hoops are great for production. If you're going to be making a bunch of things, for you know a dance club or a sports team or something like that uh there you go so kim has them and likes them right they they are less it's completely up to you How, me personally it wasn't worth the money to invest in them i just have that monster snap hoop the monster snap hoop though does not go to the full size of the nine by 14 that you can use on that 10 needle. It goes to an eight by 12. That's the only downside of that monster snap hoop. I don't know why it is not big enough. So anyway, okay, here you go. Here's a good question. You have PE design 10. Can you do all these things with it instead of buying all new software? So in short, Yes, you can. And what she's talking about, I assume, is to be able to scan in a paper pattern, import the vector graphic created by the scan and cut, and then convert that into an applique embroidery design. Can you do that with PE Design? Yes, you can. I don't know how. So you can do it with all different kinds of embroidery software, you guys. Embrilliance, is, that's not unique to Embrilliance. But what you need to do is go into your help guide and look for the word vector, V-E-C-T-O-R. Look for vector. When you find vector in your index, then get to reading and then look for the word applique and put those two paragraphs or chapters together and figure out how to do that. That's the magic. Those are the magic words in the index to find what you're doing, okay? 
So Mary likes the Mighty Hoops. They, she says it, they hold the fabric much better than Dime Hoops. Okay. Again, completely up to you guys. Uh, I find that the Dime Hoops my stuff just fine. But it depends on what you're embroidering. Okay. Again, those are great. Uh, those are great for doing a lot of multiples at that you you're knocking them out. You're doing one right after the other. Okay. Have I ever used the Acu, Acu quilt for cutting? No, Amy, I have not. Uh, I I will think about it. See, here's the thing. That's expensive. That's an expensive system. Everything we do is expensive, isn't it? Um, I right now am still able to use the rotary cutter to cut out all my pieces. And so I enjoy doing that. And I looked at it and because I have to have individual dies for each particular piece, I don't cut that many multiples. So that's the thing, you guys, you know, when you're out looking at stuff and you're seeing new things on the market or you're wanting to think about investing in something, how much are you really, really going to use it, especially if you're on a budget? So just, you know, think about that like that. But, um, yes. Okay. Cindy Hogan is a brother ambassador. She's a brother ed uh, educator. She's a brother educator and she does a lot with their software. Yes. So you can check out Cindy. Look for Cindy Hogan. Just Google it or put it in YouTube search and her videos will come up and you can take a look at stuff there. Do I have to? Oh, I see. This is a great question, Lori. Great question. And I am so glad that you asked this question this way. All right. Do you have to have a brilliance before you buy Stitch Artist 2? So let's think about this. All right. And I don't, I'm so glad you asked this question because I get this all the time. I want you guys to think about Microsoft Office. So Microsoft Office contains Word, it contains Excel, it contains PowerPoint, it contains Outlook email. Each one of those things specializes in something different, but they're all Microsoft Office, okay? Microsoft is the suite, and it has individual programs inside of that suite of software that all make up Microsoft Office. They do work together. You can build spreadsheets from, or you can build PowerPoint slides from spreadsheets, okay? And Brilliance is a suite of software. And Brilliance is the name of the software suite. Inside of Brilliance are different modules, just like the programs in Microsoft Office. You have Essentials, and that is your basic, basic embroidery software. I like to call Brilliance the Liberty Mutual of embroidery software. You only pay for what you need. All right. So if you're not going to be doing any digitizing, like you're not creating stitches from nothing, you don't need Stitch Artist, except for the way I use it. So Essentials is your basic basic. You can pull in embroidery designs that are pre-existing. You can change the lettering in them. You can do all kinds of stuff in Essentials. You can sort. You can do all this stuff. Liberty Biberty, Margie says. <laughs> I put on my mustache. <laughs> Those of you that are overseas are probably going, what are they talking about? <laughs> so then there is Enthusiast. And Enthusiast is another module, and it has a stitch editor in it. And Enthusiast also allows you to split large designs if all you have is a 5x7, and that design is a 6x10 or an 8x12, and you want to you stitch it out. You use Enthusiast to split all of that. Lisa Shaw has fabulous videos on how to do that and put on your thinking cap because it's tough. Okay. I find it tough. Anyway, math is not my thing, y'all, especially public math. <laughs> so now you guys are having fun with the commercial. I love it. Then you have density repair kit. That's another one that if you do a heavy stitch out, you bought a design and it feels like a flak vest after you stitch it, you know, you can remove those underlying stitches if it wasn't digitized properly. You've got uh, Merrily that creates patches. You've got, 
you know, you those are individual things that modules inside of the Brilliance software suite. If you're going to be digitizing, creating stitches from nothing, then you would get into the Stitch Artist modules. If you buy Stitch Artist 3, because there's three of them, you've got Stitch Artist 1, 2, and 3. If you buy 3, you have all the tools that are in 1 and 2. If you buy 2, you have all the tools that are in 1, okay? So just kind of think about it that way. I do use Stitch Artist 2 because Stitch Artist 2 allows you to import the graphic from the scanning cut that I scanned in the paper pattern. I'm creating stitches from nothing, right? So it allows you to import the graphic and click on it and hit applique and boom, it creates a placement line and a tack down stitch. But you've got to have Stitch Artist 2 for that. So there you go. I hope that's clear. I hope I hope that helps. <laughs> I have a video on that that goes a lot slower. And then it also tells you how to, that video, what is in brilliance and how does thumbnailer work? And it tells you how to configure your thumbnailer. So I hope that helps. <clears throat> oh, Sabrina, thank you. You guys are awesome. Sent me an email on the rotation issue for the iPad. I will look at that. Thank you. Because I'm not doing anything and it just... Which video is that? Terry, if you go on to my channel in YouTube, and then, you know, where it says Power Tools with Thread across the top here on my main channel banner, click on videos or click on, what are they called? Uh, where it's a list of all the same videos that apply to the same thing. Playlist. Playlist. Click on playlist and, and look for Imbrilliance. The very first video is that basic Imbrilliance video that explains the concept of Imbrilliance embroidery software and how it works. And while we're talking about it, thank you, Melanie. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> I need you guys to think of the words for me. Uh, while, while we're at it, I've got a link below. Imbrilliance has got another 10% off coupon out good through the 15th of January. So if you go down there, you click uh, my link and you can use the coupon code and get another uh, 10% off. So that's very nice of them to do that. They do. Yeah, they've got a great uh, chart that explains all the different modules. Where that's exactly at, I can't tell you. But you can kind of go down and it'll explain each one and tell you what it is. So, all righty. So let's see here. Amy Stowes is going live on uh facebook i wonder is that for the that is for the uh box opening i think have i tried embroidering a baseball cap on your single needle if so what frame do you recommend okay all right whoop sorry didn't mean to do that you find it brilliant it's difficult to use well you need to spend some time on the videos <laughs> so embroidering a baseball cap on a single needle I do not recommend it. There are so many different kinds of baseball caps and you guys, baseball caps are exactly like embroidering on a garment. All the fabrics are different. Okay. Whether it's a quilting cotton or it's a knit or something like that. Baseball caps are different too. The most popular baseball cap right now is called a Richardson 112. And it's got a heavy seam right in the middle. The crown is a little bit taller. It's got a heavy seam right in the middle and you're going to break your needles on a single needle machine straight up get a pack of them and get ready because you're going to break your needle as it hits in the middle of that if you want to embroider on a baseball cap make a patch using merrily or some other patch software and stitch the baseball cap stitch the patch to the baseball cap that's why you're seeing a lot of patches now on baseball caps because the richardson caps the one the one that are stylish that all the guys like to wear are two, they're killing the embroidery machines, okay? Designs and Machine Embroidery has a cap hoop. Well, it's not a hoop, it's a, yeah, they have a cap. And it's got a clamp that you can put, it's like a clipboard clamp is essentially what it is. Um, and you can do that. If you've got a baseball cap that's got a soft top to it, okay, you can stitch those. Like the kind you get at Hobby Lobby, 
but y'all, uh, yeah, Velcro, that, this is a great way to do too. Okay, this is a good way to do it as well. Put on a, you can stitch the patch and use great uh, Velcro for that. Thank you, Chris. That's a great one. Make a patch and attach it. Do not embroider on baseball caps with a single needle machine. I've done it on my multi-needle and Spanky, not happy. It was such a miserable experience. I said, nope, not doing it anymore. Uh, we get people who ask us to make caps for them. And after the first two dozen that we made for them, I told Keith never again. It, I just don't want it to damage my machine. Plus the heartache that I go through with that. It's just not fun, you guys. So if if you look now, all of the, the now the pleather, here's the thing too. So if you want to make a, a patch out of the pleather, leather look at, all right, so let's get into this, okay? If you want to make a patch out of leather with your single needle, don't do it. If you've got a domestic machine like a Luminaire or a Solaris or something and you're wanting to stitch on leather, don't do it. That machine is not designed for that. You're going to break your machine. You're going to send it into the shop and I'm not going to be responsible. All right. Embroidering caps is hard on your hands too. But see, Jude, caps have changed. It's, it's the cap itself that has changed. So the other thing is, if you're going to be embroidering on pleather, which is better for your machine, then you, the, the problem with pleather is that it's not solid core. A lot of it's not. So if you look on the side of it, let me see. I've got it right here. I'm, we're almost out of time. And I've been talking this whole time about embroidery, right? Y'all, I've lived through that and I know it's not fun. So take a look at this. Now this, this pleather is from Sally Tomato. See how it looks like Sally Tomato is a bag making company. They got a ton of stuff. So see how it looks like leather on the inside? See how it's brown? If you get cheaper pleather, it's going to be white on the inside. It won't look like leather. So you're looking for something that looks like this. See that? That looks like leather. And I did this on my Luminaire and it turned out fine. This is the little luggage tag. We're going to make this on Friday. It is, I've got a link to it below. Okay. To creative appliques. And we're going to make this on Friday morning, probably around 10 AM central. It's going to take about two hours. I'm going to do it live. We're going to put in a zipper. Okay. We're going to play with vinyl so that you can make multiple layers. It has a lining of quilt fabric. That's quilting cotton in the lining. We're gonna stitch on one side. We're gonna work on the back, okay? We're working on the back on the luggage tag. So the strap, don't, I'm, this is a cam snap. I would not, uh, I don't recommend a cam snap to withstand baggage handling, okay? I'm going to be using the product that Dawn from Creative Appliques recommends on her website, which is screw tight little screws. These are metal. Uh, somebody had a good suggestion yesterday to put some Loctite on these so that they don't come loose. <clears throat> but so we're going to make a zipper. You need a nylon zipper. I just happen to have a metal tab, but the tab was way off when we were stitching. On the back of the hoop, we're going to do work on the back. So we're going to take lettering from inside of your machine and add it to the design. We're going to do all kinds of neat techniques on Friday. Can you use canvas instead of pleather? Sure. Yeah. So if you want to make a patch out of that canvas, dime canvas, whatever you want, it's fine. Yeah. Kathy says she's done five hats on her quattro. She'll never do it again. Yep. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, you guys, it's not, it's not the doing, you know, and that used to be a big selling feature for single needle embroidery machines was, oh, you can make your own baseball caps. You can't do that anymore. And it's not because of the machines. It's because the caps have changed and nobody wants, nobody wants those little flat caps that you get at Hobby Lobby, unless there are five, right? Because they don't know any better. 
but I would not put a Richardson 112 in a single needle. No way. No way. I would, I just wouldn't do it. Well, gosh, you guys, this has been a lot of fun. Thank you so much for spending your morning with me. I will see you guys tomorrow morning. So if you just would take a second, I'd appreciate it. Give it a thumbs up. And I'm going to change the title to uh, your questions, embroidery questions answered, because that's what we spent the time doing today, wasn't it? Um, what size screws am I using? I don't know, Betty. I got them. Look on Dawn's, uh, on Creative Applique's website, the hardware that she likes to use. I don't have the packaging anymore. I'm sorry. Uh, so this has been great. Thank you. Thank you. I love you guys all. We have had a great time this morning. All right. So we will talk to you soon. You guys go say something. Bye.